didn't start this. I thought I started it. Okay. So he had these demands. Um, and uh, East Germany is actually the poorer section of Germany. West Germany is more the rich area of Germany. So when he goes for reparations and he gets them from East Germany, he's getting from a very poor and devastated East Germany guy. Okay. He promised to declare war on Japan after the defeat of Germany. That's a big deal because at this point in the Pacific, guys, we don't know whether we're going to win or not. Okay? And he will do that. He said he will declare war one month after the defeat of Germany on Japan. Okay? What's interesting about that is it's one month or three months? Um, three months. Okay? Three months to the day they will declare war on Japan after the war in Europe. That's August 7th, because it was uh, VE Day is June. So July, maybe it's two months. June, July, okay? Um, two months to the day, and we dropped the atomic bomb on August 6th, the day before Russia declares war on Japan. Japan won't surrender formally until the 16th of August, which gives Stalin time to get his troops into a place known as Korea. And we had a question this morning about North Korea. And ever since those troops rolled into Korea, the northern part of Korea, those Soviet troops, North Korea has been communist, pretty much, okay? Just like much of Eastern Europe will be for 40 years. Okay, so the timing here is really interesting. Okay, do you guys kind of follow that? Okay. He promised to join the United Nations when it was established, and when he did, because Russia is so big, he demanded two seats on the UN Security Council. We allowed him to take some Japanese islands and outer Mongolia. Okay, if you look over here at this map, this big yellow blob right here, this is outer Mongolia. So that will fall under Russian control as the decision that's made at Yalta. Okay? And then the last one here is Stalin promises not to interfere in Eastern Europe. This is a big fat lie. Okay? Because once those Red Army tanks rolled into Eastern Europe, they did not leave for 40 years. Okay? So you can see the significance of hundreds of millions of Europeans to the decisions that are being made at this conference by these three men. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to turn off the lights because this is hard to read down here at the bottom. So FDR and Churchill take Stalin at his word. They felt they didn't have a choice. They needed Germany. They needed the Russians to help defeat Germany and then eventually Japan. Okay? And um, the next 40 years, like I said, um, the free world will pay a price for Stalin's lies. That's what that says if you can't read it. So, felt they needed Soviet armies to defeat Germany and Japan. For the next 40 years, the world would pay a price. Okay. Now, why? Why were Roosevelt and, not really Churchill, but why was Roosevelt accommodating to Stalin? Well, we understand we need the Russians. We think we need the Russians to defeat Germany, and especially Japan. Now, this whole idea about the atomic bomb, okay, we didn't test the atomic bomb until July of 1945. So at this point, this is in, this is in February of 45, right after the Battle of the Bulge. Roosevelt doesn't know whether we're going to have this weapon. He doesn't know how big this weapon's going to be, okay? But you know who has spies 
at the Manhattan Project, tracking the progress of building the atomic bomb? Russia. Stalin has spies where we are building this weapon. Well, Vice President Truman is oblivious to the Manhattan Project, which creates the atomic bomb. Joseph Stalin knows about it. Now, Roosevelt hasn't told him. Roosevelt hasn't told Churchill. This is top secret. But Stalin knows what's going on. Okay? Now, a few years ago, well, quite a few years, in 1990, when the Soviet Union collapsed, for a couple of years there, they opened their archives. Remember when I told you the story about Genwabe in Poland where the Jews and the, and the Poles lived together in that town and the Poles turned on the Jews? Remember that story? And that's how we found out about that story is when the Soviets opened their archives. Well, what we also found out was that there were Soviet spies working in our government. See, we had suspicions that they had spies in our government. But when they opened their archives, we could take post-war intelligence and code names that were used to communicate with spies in our country and their files and match those names to actual individuals. Okay? And when that was done, we found out that advising President Roosevelt at Yalta was a State Department official named Alger Hiss, who was a Soviet spy. Now, speaking of Soviet spies, you've all heard of McCarthyism. Okay? For those of you at home. Okay, McCarthyism. I'll turn the lights back on. Um, now, when you studied this in English class, your sophomore year, I believe, junior year? Junior year? Okay. You learned about Joseph McCarthy and what this meant. Now, not many people have an ism named after him. Marxism? McCarthyism? You got any others? Darwinism? Okay. <coughs> So to have an ism named after you, that's pretty impressive, okay? But what does it mean? The practice of making accusations of disloyalty, subversion, or treason without proper regard for evidence. It also means the practice of making unfair allegations or using unfair investigative <coughs> techniques, especially in order to restrict dissent or political criticism. The term has its origins in the period known as the Second Red Scare, lasting roughly from 1950 to 56, and characterized by the heightened fears of communist, communist influence on American institutions and espionage by Soviet agents. Originally coined to criticize the anti-communist pursuits of Republican Senator, and it's important to remember he was a senator, not a member of the House, Joseph McCarthy of Wisconsin. McCarthyism took on, took on a broader meaning describing the excesses of similar efforts the term is also known, more generally used, to describe reckless, unsubstantiated accusations as well as demagogic attacks on the character uh, or patriotism of political adversaries. Okay? Now, during the war, we had something known as the Venona Project, where we were tracking messages from the Soviet Union into the United States. Okay? So we matched those, that information, with Soviet records, and this is what we found out. Oh, right there. This is Alger Hiss on the left. This man was a Soviet spy. He was at Yalta. He was advising Roosevelt at Yalta. So not only were they on Russian soil, but Stalin had a Soviet agent in the year of the President of the United States. Now, this is not 1950 to 56, the McCarthy era. This is prior to that. By doing this, uh, we now understand that communist infiltration of the U.S. government in the 1930s and 40s 
was real and damaging. The opening of some Soviet archives and the release of the Venona Project files intercepted wartime and post-war messages between Moscow and communist agents of the United States has confirmed much of what Whitaker Chambers, this is Whitaker Chambers here, I've got a book up on the shelf called Witness, written by Chambers. He's a confessed Soviet spy. He confessed. And he named this man as a Soviet spy. There's a wonderful history to study here. Because when he was accused of being a spy, he denied it. And President Truman came to the defense of Alger Hiss. We know today he was a spy. Now, this is what Chambers told the House Un-American Activities Committee. Now remember, MacArthur was in the Senate. The House had an Un-American Activities Committee to question the loyalty of certain people in our country. Three recent books on the subject, The Hunter with Venona Decoding Soviet Espionage in America and The Venona Secrets, provide evidence that American communists successfully, check this out, successfully infiltrated the State Department, that's his, the Treasury Department, the OSS, which is the CIA of World War II. We talked about Mo Berg, the catcher, okay? The Justice Department, the Agriculture, Agriculture Department, Commerce Department, the Office of War Information, the War Production Board, the Board of Economic Warfare, the Civil Service Commission, the Agriculture Adjustment Administration, AAA, the Army, the Navy, the Congress, and the Manhattan Project that was building the atomic bomb, the United Nations, and the White House. Soviet spies. The highest ranking Soviet agents included Harry Dexter White, number two man at the Treasury, Alger Hiss, key State Department official, advising Roosevelt at Yalta, Duncan Lee, chief assistant to the OSS director Donovan. That's like the assist, chief assistant of the CIA is a Soviet spy. Congressman Samuel Dickstein and Lucilin Curie, special assistant president, all Soviet spies. The authors of Venona's Secret so, go so far to identify Harry Hopkins as one of SDR's most trusted advisors as a Soviet agent. If that is true, then the Soviet Union had in place an agent of influence who had the ear of the president on every significant issue and policy. Now, you can choose to believe this. A lot of this is proven, okay? So when you get Joseph McCarthy in 1950, and he's warning the American people about communist agents infiltrating our government, you know what President Eisenhower said about McCarthy? who's Eisenhower, one of the most level-headed presidents we've ever had, he said, thank God somebody's doing it, exposing this. Because it was real. There were Soviet spies in our government. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a communist. This is a free country, and you're welcome to be a communist, okay? If you want, if you believe that way, okay? But listen. If you're locked in a Cold War where the other side has hydrogen bombs and delivery systems to send them over your country, is it a good idea to have agents of that country in the upper echelons of our government? Probably not. Okay? So this just gives you... Now, this doesn't excuse Joseph McCarthy of his tactics, okay, because to wrongfully accuse, but I want, if you guys, you know, whoever your English teacher was and talked about McCarthy, listen, Joseph McCarthy was one of the most popular men in America, just like Richard Nixon, and it all went to hell in a handbasket really fast. Did you know, did you know that he was a tail gunner on a B-17 during World War II, Joseph McCarthy? Anybody ever tell you that? He was a patriot that used some wrong tactics. Now, you can also look this up. Joseph McCarthy never called out an individual. 
never said this person is a communist. Never did. What he did say is that I have a list of 100 people in the State Department that are communist agents. That list didn't have any names on it. Okay? He went too far. Okay, his tactics came off as McCarthyite, if you will. Um, and, and for that reason, you know, he was wrong the way he went about that. Um, but if you ever see a video that says they're having peaceful people testify in front of Congress and asking them, have you, are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And they're calling in people from Hollywood that are making movies that are socialistic and so forth. And um, That was in the House. Joseph McCarthy was in the Senate. That was the House committees doing that. That wasn't Joseph McCarthy doing that. Okay? So, am I trying to repair the name of Joseph McCarthy? Well, in a sense I am because there were Soviet agents in the State Department when Joseph McCarthy said there were. Okay? Were, did he have a list of 100? No, he didn't. Okay? So, McCarthy, uh, you know, his whole life is shot after this. Okay? Um, but for a while, guys, was a very popular senator from Wisconsin. And a tail gunner on a B-17 bomber. Okay. So, um, probably didn't hear all that in English class, but. Thank you. Okay. How much time we got? Okay. So here's the thing. More decisions are going to be made at the end here as to who's going to take Berlin. Remember, the goal of our troops when they got off those boats at Normandy was to get to Berlin. They never will. Okay? And I'll explain that tomorrow. Oh, by the way, there's a question, if you didn't get this, on the test about the promises and demands that Stalin made. 